<clears throat> Hello, friends. How are you? Exiled Faye. Hello. The brain isn't cooperating today. I'm sorry to hear that. I hope you're doing okay otherwise. Senator, enjoy the lurk. Runewolf, hello. Lurking in the background, but woot. Thank you for the lurk. Appreciate. Uh, we're going to be doing some clicky clackies today. This is going to be my last stream of the year. Uh, we are tentatively supposed to be flying um, to visit some relatives uh, to visit Ghost Pepper's family on Thursday. There has been... <laughs> Hang on, i got to fix my, my mat here. Uh, there has been a massive winter storm uh, over the airport that we are supposed to be. <laughs> uh, not... I mean, it's snowing here too, but this is not necessarily uh, our local airport. Um, we are supposed to fly to a bigger hub airport and fly from there to where we're supposed to go. There has been a massive winter storm that has essentially shut down that airport uh, today and yesterday. We don't know <laughs> what things are going to look like on Thursday. So it doesn't exist in my neck of the woods, but holy cow. Um... So I think I can, because I'm not necessarily doxing myself, because we, we don't live in Vancouver. We are supposed to fly to the Vancouver airport uh, on Thursday, and then from there, fly to Toronto. Um, but Vancouver's not all that used to snow, uh, and they have been, the, the lower mainland, the lower BC mainland has been slammed with snow uh, the last few days. We've got it here as well. Um, so, uh, basically that airport is not moving right now. Uh, they're asking people not to come to the airport if they don't have to. <clears throat> Max and her family are from Toronto. Uh, yeah, um, we lived in Toronto for eight years. It's a very interesting city. Um, and again, uh, Ghost's family doesn't live specifically in Toronto. It's just the airport that's closest to where they actually um, reside. They would be picking us up from that airport. So we have basically reached out to um, Ghost's mother, who is the one who actually initially booked the flight. Um, she is checking with our flight carrier to see, uh, one, if they have any information about what the potential status of our flight for Thursday would be. Um, because unfortunately the forecast is showing that it might still be storming, uh, on Thursday in Vancouver area. Um, so she's reaching out to them to see, uh, what the status of our flight is, um, if it's possible to route us through another airport, um, if we can leave from our town, which does have an airport, and fly to somewhere else such as Calgary, um, that is not experiencing a total shutdown and see if we can get from point A to point B, um, without, uh, any trouble. Otherwise, um, cause it's, you know, it's two days before we're supposed to leave. We might just have to wait and see what Thursday looks like. Um, and <laughs> just hope for the best. Uh, so that was an interesting, that was an interesting thing to wake up to, uh, just all this, uh, news about, hey, there was a major, there was a major winter storm over the BC, uh, lower mainland, and, um, travel is shutting down. Um, I'm hoping that we can find a way to get home, because it has been, I think the last time we were home for Christmas, um, to visit with. Um, I say home, but the last time we visited um, for Christmas with Ghost's family was in 2018, uh, because in 2019 we bought this house um, in November and um, we were settling in um, and Ghost's parents had just been here helping us get everything um, put together and get a guest moved in. Uh, and so we were like, well, we'll stay home this Christmas because we have so much to do with the house and we'll travel next Christmas. And next Christmas was 2020. Uh, so it has been 2018 since we were able to get home and, or to get to their place. I, I don't know why I call it home. It was where they live was never home to either of us, but we haven't been able to get over to visit them, 
Um, now, we did go this summer uh, for a small trip, which was great. Uh, but we haven't been able to do Christmas together since 2018. So it would be really nice if uh, the stars would align for Thursday and allow the air traffic to get through um, so that we could all have Christmas together. Um, there has been a little bit of, hopefully it won't come to this, but there has been a little bit of, hey, if we end up not being able to get anywhere for Christmas, what's our plan? Um, we do luckily have a beef roast in the freezer that Ghost Pepper purchased um, a week or so ago that we had just decided to save for when we get back in January. So if it comes to it, um, we probably can't necessarily get turkey um, in time for Christmas, but we do have something that we could use for a nice home-cooked Christmas meal if need be. Um, my whole thing is I just don't want to get stuck in between. We got stranded overnight in Calgary coming home over the summer. Uh, and luckily for us, Ghost Pepper does have a cousin who lives in Calgary who was able to put us up for the night. Uh, let us crash uh, in her daughter's bedroom for like four hours of sleep, uh, which we really appreciated not being stuck in the airport the entire night. Um, but my biggest nightmare is getting stuck in between destinations, so... It took me a second to realize you weren't talking about the Rainbow Bridge by Frost. <laughs> um, dang, I wish we could travel via Bifrost, because it seems like that's pretty instantaneous, and I would be, I would be really happy. Um, it's pronounced Bifrost. Is it now? That would make sense. That's not how they say it in the Marvel Mar Marble universe. In the Marvel universe. Also, apparently, my lips just don't work. <laughs> um. So yeah, that that was um that was what I woke up to this morning. I'm a little bit stressed about it because I don't travel easily to begin with. I I find air travel to be very stressful. Um. So I'm not really thrilled that it's two days before we're leaving and there's this huge question mark hanging over it now. Um, like I said, hopefully stars will align and we'll be able to get where we want to go. I just don't want to be... There are stories of people being stuck on the tarmac for like 12 hours because they're, they can't even get back to the gates to deplane. I don't want that to be me. I don't want to be in that position. <laughs> Beef roast. Ah, I see. I see. I heard beef roast and meat products are never where my mind goes first. Yeah, and we have a, a roast beef, a roast beast in the, uh, in the, fr in the freezer, um, for use if need be. Um, you know, if we have to make do, if we have to make do without traveling um, over Christmas, it's not like the end of the world or anything. But I know that um, Ghost's mom will be really disappointed. She has some plans. Um, you know, it's it's one of those things where we just are trying to keep abreast of the situation so that we know, like before we bundle into a taxi and try to go to the airport, what to expect. Um, and unfortunately, I've read that cancel when people are having their flights canceled, they're not getting an option to rebook until the 26th or 27th. And we were supposed to come home on the 1st um, because his parents are actually um, flying out on the 31st because they are going on a trip um, that they have been trying to do for like four years. <laughs> So if we couldn't if we couldn't get out there until the 27th, um, then that then would come the question of is it worth flying out there for four days, um, or should they just try to you know bank that trip for a longer trip in the summer or something? So I hope we get to go to. Uh, we were looking forward to this trip. Um, but I'd, like I said, I don't want to get stuck in as long as we don't get stuck in between. Um, whatever. <laughs> uh, but today, um, is the final, uh, stream for me for 2022. I almost said 2023. We're not there yet. 
Um, this, this will be my final stream for 2022 because presumably we are flying out on Thursday to visit family. Um, I will assume until I hear otherwise that that is still happening. Um, so we are going to write the final story in the 20 story, 22 stories in 2022 project. Um, I originally was thinking that I might count number 16.2, um, because the unapproved hedgehogs was two shorts and two streams. Hey, Woof, how's it going? Um, so theoretically, we've already done 22 shorts for the blog, even though we've only done 21 prompts. Uh, but when I went back through, I sort of keep a little bit of a blog buffer uh, so that if I'm sick one week and I can't write something, the blog can still update. When I checked back over my buffer, I realized that I needed to write this 20 second uh, prompt in order to be caught up on what I, you know, where I consider caught up for uh, my buffers for the year. So we're going to go ahead and do it. Um, we got a lovely prompt from a member of the community. Um, that I'm really looking forward to doing something with. Um, and then we get that nice um, round number of 22 stories. Um, there was a little bit of stress because I got to, I got to um, October and realized that it was gonna be pretty hard to fit in those last couple prompts. Um, and when you announce in January uh, that you're gonna do something, uh, you're like, yeah, sure, I'll be able to find time for that. And then as the year slowly ticks away, you're like, maybe I shouldn't have made those promises. <laughs> so I'm really glad that I'm actually able to fit this in. It makes a really good final prompt, or final stream for the year. Um, and then hopefully I'm going to be back in 2023 with some more exciting stuff. I'm actually hoping to sit down later tonight during um, the, the Winds of Chaos D&D session and see if I can draft out some of my, my goals and plans for the Twitch channel in 2023 um, so that when I come back and get the blog moving again, you guys will have um, some information to look forward to. You're on Lunch Wolf. Cheers. I hope lunch is delicious. Did you order today or did you pack? What is, what is lunch today in, uh, Wolfland? Mood? I know, like, you start out a year, you start out a year, and this is the thing, too, is because I'm starting to look to 2023, I'm starting to look to what are my goals for 2023, what are, what are my plans, what are the promises that I'm making to myself and to the community, um, and you always have this, this bright starry eyed, yeah, I can do this and this and this in the new year. Um, but you'd never know where you're going to be in June or July <laughs> versus where you are in January. So, um, I do, I do remember at the beginning of the year just being like, yeah, 20, 22 prompts in 2022, that's less than two a month. That should be totally doable. <laughs> And then there were a couple times near the end of the year where I was like, that's going to be cutting it close. Um, so uh, I do think, I think I've mentioned this before, but I think one of the things that I'm going to be looking to do in 2023 is have less stream specific projects. Um, I think I kind of dug myself into a hole this year where I thought um, if I announced a for stream project that 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 project could only be worked on while I was on stream and never when I was off stream and so that ran into um that ran me into some scheduling problems where it would have been really nice to fit some work on a project um in an afternoon but it wasn't an afternoon that I could stream uh, or to, to do something quick in the morning, but it wasn't a morning I could stream. And so I felt like I would be kind of cheating the community if I didn't do those things on stream. So I'm thinking in, in the new year, I'm not going to worry as much about um, which projects I'm streaming. Um, because... Uh, <laughs> what? Well, if, I can't tell if that is a sarcastic good job or <laughs> good job. You realized that you put yourself in a corner. <laughs> good job. Um... 
Well, if I love it when you speak to me in emotes and I have to just guess what they're for. Um. <gasps> what? People fake love? <gasps> Woof. My heart. Why would you do this to me? Why? After, after all the love and joy I've given you, after all the secrets I've allowed you to witness on my streams, how could you people fake love me? Um, not the fake love, woof. Fake love is bad. Um, so yeah, anyway, uh, long story short, I just, I think I'm gonna worry less about, um, stream-specific projects and more about just fitting streaming into... Because uh, I did a lot of gymnastics this year of trying to um, fit certain projects into streams and make my schedule around the times I was going to stream. And it, it did, it, it was hard. As the year went on, it became more and more difficult in some ways to feel like, um, to feel like I could fit streams in with and stream the projects that I said I was going to stream. So I think in the new year, I'm basically just going to be like, these are the times that I want to stream and whatever project I'm working on at that time will be what ends up being on the stream. I think I've kind of learned over the course of 2022 that I don't always have to show my what I'm writing on camera. I can sometimes hide the words if I'm working on something that can't necessarily be read by stream, but it's the best time slot for a stream. Um, I've kind of learned that people are here more for me and for the hangout and for the productivity than for, you know, what specific project I'm working on, which is liberating because it, it'll, it will allow me to, um, fit streaming more easily into my schedule without feeling like I'm doing a lot of, um, extra, um, scheduling gymnastics. Uh, I used to do a block schedule where I would work on one project one day and another project another day. And I stopped doing that a lot in 2022 because I was um, trying to arrange my, my project slash stream schedule. Um, but it's actually the, the block scheduling actually works a lot better for me. There's a lot less mental gymnastics if I don't have to switch between projects in a day. Uh, so I want to go back to that. I want to go back to prioritizing the type of schedule that works best for me. Um, prioritizing, making sure that my projects are getting... Not to, not that I neglected my projects this year or felt like my, my projects haven't gotten enough attention, but I just want to make it easier to accommodate that mental process. Um, and since we're doing productivity streams, since we're, we're doing streams about creating a good writing environment for you and good writing habits, I should be modeling those, that as well. I should be doing what I say to other people to do. Um, and so mainly the, like, it's not going to be that different in 2023. Um, I don't think the overall channel vibe, um, is going to change. I just might not consistently stream the same project as often. Um, I probably will keep trying to do shorts, um, mostly on stream just because they work really well and are fun. Um, but I'm not going to stress out as much if there's something that I want to just sort of slide into a pocket of my day and it doesn't end up being on stream. Um, I think that will be good for me and what's good for me will hopefully be good for the channel. What's good for the goose is good for the gander, right? Uh, yay, learning. You hit 500 followers. Congrats. I didn't see that. I did. Thank you. I, that happened just, I think, last week. Um, it was actually Delta Flareon was actually my 500th follower, um, which is odd because I'm pretty sure Delta was following me before, but Twitch has been doing that thing lately where you're like, wait a minute, I'm not following you. I thought I've been following you for ages. Uh, yeah, I love Delta Flareon. So she and, she and Flanny came over for a raid. She was my 500th. Um, I can't, I can't believe that I hit 500 in a little over a year. Um, but I, 500 hour stream, that could never happen, woof. <laughs> I don't even know how, how many days is 500 hours? Hours to days, uh, co converter. Uh, 500 hours is 20 days. 20 days, woof. I'm not going to stream for 20, almost 21 days. 
Um, it made me follow you twice too, Senator, because I'm sure I was following you and then I had to re-follow you and I felt horrible because I was like, I know that I have had you on like my dash and then one day you, you were just gone and Ghost was like, I'm watching Senator. And I was like, what do you mean? I don't see Senator online. So I went to your channel manually and I was like, son of a bee. Sounds reasonable. All right, you know what, Wolf? I'll make you a deal. When you do a 500 hour stream, I will also do a 500 hour stream. You first, and then I will do it. Um, so yeah, it's not, there's not gonna be a ton of major changes um, to the channel, um, but I'm, I'm just gonna try to, I think most of, I think most of the stuff of like me feeling um, penned in by my schedule was created solely by me. It's not like anyone uh, in the community ever made me feel pressured to do specific projects on stream or to stream everything that was 100% me saying, hey, wouldn't it be cool if I wrote an entire book on stream and did all of the outlining and then the world building and stuff, which it was cool and it was fun. Um, but it was also a little bit hard in the scheduling department. So I think... Um, I've seen people do it for subathon. Oh, like un unfollow someone and refollow someone during the subathon. But doesn't that like, I don't know. Doesn't that like not change the numbers? I don't know. <laughs> or you've seen them do 500 hours of streaming for subathon. <laughs> uh, so. So yeah, I'm, I'm just basically um, ah, a month long sub thought. That makes sense. Um, I'm, I'm basically just going to try and not stress myself out over a bunch of little extra like rules for streaming um, that are completely made by myself and in no way expectations of other people. It's funny how sometimes we are our own worst enemies in that we're like, okay, if I'm going to do this thing, then I have to have this parameter and this parameter. Um, and really, um, I'm not really in the center of this frame, it's driving me nuts. Um, but really, no one, no one really, um, thinks it's that big of a deal except for the person who is arbitrarily making their own rules for themselves. <laughs> so I'm basically gonna try not to do that. I'm gonna try not to make streaming more difficult for myself than it needs to be. I'm gonna try and focus on just doing my work, sharing my work time with you guys. And having more of this, having, having more um, hangouts. Um, so today we are going to write the 22nd story. I don't even think I've saved this file yet, so let's do that. Story 22 of 22 stories in 2022. And as I mentioned, um, our prompt today comes from a member of our community, the lovely Bo the Distance. Um, and the prompt today is every god will fit in a purse if you try hard enough. Um, I believe this was an attack of autocorrect. I believe Bo was trying to say every dog will fit in a purse if you try hard enough. Um, and their phone evidently decided that they meant uh, god instead. Uh, and I was instantly fascinated with this concept and said, hey, uh, can I make that the final prompt in the 22 stories in 2022? And Bo said, yes, please do. So that is what our prompt is. Yeah, I believe it happened on Flutterstream. It was it was hilarious. Um, so that is that is what we're going to do. Um, there was a little bit of... <laughs> there was a little bit of panic last night when I realized that I hadn't put a lot of thought into these prompts into this prompt. Hey, Diz is living. How's it going? Um, full disclosure, I don't always plan these prompts ahead of time. Sometimes I sit down at my computer and have no concept of what I want to do. And I just sort of throw myself into the fire and whatever. Um, but I hadn't even chosen what characters I wanted to feature, like what world this was taking place in. I had no idea where I was going with this particular prompt as of 11.30 last night. Um, and so there was a little bit of getting ready for bed and panicking because, OMG, what am I gonna write in the morning? 
Um, but I did come up with an idea that I do like. Going okay, I made myself clean earlier, but that's about it. Cleaning is always good. It always feels nice to have it out of the way. I love that though, writing, writing blind can be a rush. Absolutely. And I didn't plan very much. I just wanted to have a core concept for what to do. Um, I needed a narrator, essentially. I needed to settle on who was gonna be writing, who was gonna be driving this scene, um, which just required me to choose a world to stick it in, at least. Um, and I like to have a concept that isn't entirely fluff. I like to do a little something with each of these prompts. So um, it it took a little bit of um, flurry of, of thinking, but I did come up with something. Was in a little bit of a hole and the dishes were piling. Oh no, it always, dirty dishes is one of the things that always stresses me out. There's, um, there's a few like cleaning things that I can just be like, okay, whatever, I'll deal with that when I have a chance. But dirty dishes is one that like always stresses me out. So I feel you. Um, so for this prompt, I, I did a little bit of going back over uh, the prompts that I wrote this year, because one of the main things that I wanted to do, um, I guess I should introduce what the project was, <laughs> not assume that everyone was here for a bunch of them. Uh, the 22 Stories in 2022 project is basically, I wanted to write a bunch of shorts for my blog, um, 22 of them for 2022. Each of the prompts was taken from somewhere on the internet or provided by the community. Some of them were prompts that I wouldn't necessarily have chosen to do otherwise, but I wanted to sort of stretch myself to do some things that I wouldn't normally do. The only rules I really set for myself, which were really loose rules, were one, I wanted everything to fit in my multiverse. Um, to be canon in some fashion in the multiverse that my novels takes place in. And two, I wanted to try to avoid main characters. So it's very easy for Dahmerin to whisper little extras in my ear that end up on my blog quite often. I wanted to feature side characters. I wanted to feature characters that don't necessarily get a lot of attention um, on my blog or supporting characters from my various novels. I did break that rule a few times. There was at least one scene that was written from Dahmer's perspective. And I did allow main characters to appear in the background. Um, but for the most part, I've tried to, um, to focus on side characters and I've tried to spread it around the worlds a little bit. I did notice that Aravalia Chronicles popped up a lot. There's a lot of side characters in Aravalia Chronicles that I wanted to feature. There was a lot of world building exercises that I felt were great for Aravalia Chronicles during this project. It is the novel series that I'm working on right now, so it makes a certain amount of sense, but I have spread the love around a little bit, which is great. Um, the main motivation uh, for today was to see if there were any characters that I missed uh, when I was going back through featuring characters in this uh, project and to make sure that they got a little bit of spotlight before the project ends. Not that I'm gonna like specifically not feature side characters, but I, when I was trying to decide who should be the narrator today, that's one of the things I looked at. Um, and I realized that I had written quite a bit about Robin, um, Dameron's daughter in the space universe, uh, but I had kind of neglected his other children because he does have other children in other worlds. Um, and I decided that today's prompt should be written by um, Dameron's son, Dormal, uh, because as I've mentioned several times, uh, Aravalia Chronicles is a generational story and the second generation um, has to come into their own at some point. Um, so the characters featured in today's uh, prompt are going to be Dormal, Silverbell, Silverbell and Valerian, um, the uh, siblings uh, from the Aravalia Chronicles. And these are um, Dameron and Crescent's children. I won't say who their mother is because it's a little bit spoilery. Um, but uh, this is this is Dameron and Crescent's family. This is their this is the second generation. Um, and I'm gonna have Dormal be the narrator, but I'm gonna have all three of the siblings featured uh, in the story. I was in lay down sad mode, so I let them pile too long. All done now though. Well, I'm glad you were able to get them done and I hope you're feeling a bit better. Um, I have definitely, I have definitely wanted to spend the last several days just curled up on, under a blanket on the couch. So I definitely, I definitely feel you. Um, whether or not this flight happens on Thursday, I am spending Friday resting, <laughs> so. 
Um, so yeah, we're gonna be taking a look at these three lovely children. I say children, they're gonna be grown up at the time that I'm writing this. Um, my inspiration for uh, this particular scene comes from The Mummy. Um, which, if you are a child of the 80s and 90s, as I was, um, you will automatically know um, the glory of The Mummy. Uh, we watched this movie on every band trip, every chorus trip. It always somehow made it onto the little TVs in every bus. Um, it, it was like, I don't know, it was like the... <laughs> The movie that enchanted our generation. It didn't matter if it was good or not. It was glorious. Um, and there's a scene in that movie where um, one of the one of the characters is cornered essentially by the mummy, and he's you know this this seedy sort of um, less reputable character. Uh, and he just pulls a, like, a, you know how you can have, like, keychains with, like, a bunch of keys? He basically pulls a necklace with a bunch of pendants out. And he starts flipping through, like, religious symbols and saying prayers in different languages to try and find the one that will essentially keep the mummy from destroying him. Um, and it's, it's a, it's a hilarious scene, uh, in the context of the movie, um, and of course, um, when he, uh, starts speaking, I believe it's when he starts speaking Hebrew, um, the mummy is like, hey, wait a minute, I know that language. Um, so I wanted to do something similar to that, but in a, uh, fantasy sense, um, the idea of sort of having a little pocket shrine, um, or a series of pocket shrines that can sort of be, um that can be transported with you wherever you go and sort of having someone who isn't necessarily isn't necessarily a hardcore believer in every religion but doesn't ne isn't necessarily a non-believer uh, in any religion and religion isn't something that has come up in the Aravalia Chronicles a lot because most of the main characters are very much Domarin is a if you can't see taste touch smell experience it firsthand it doesn't exist kind of person if if he has not seen it experienced it then to him it's bullshit <laughs> um you know science science makes sense because you can you can trace it in the real world you can see the effects it can be proven um, anything supernatural. And it's ironic because supernatural things actually do exist in Aravalia Chronicles. Um, it's pro I haven't had it happen in any of the books, but it's probable that ghosts and like demons and that kind of stuff are things that do appear in this actual world. Um, so in some cases, Domrin is like, that's bullshit, but it's actually not, which I think is hilarious. Um, so probably in part because he's very, very much, um, I guess he would be, is it, um, is it agnostics that just don't believe in anything? Um, or is it atheist? I'm not, I'm not sure. I always get the two mixed up, but he basically believes in nothing. He believes in nothing supernatural. He doesn't believe in an afterlife. He doesn't believe, which is ironic because it's also a thing. <laughs> It's also a thing in the world that he lives in. Um, he doesn't believe in any of that stuff, so it doesn't come up really in the novels, um, or hasn't to this point, because it's not something that he really assigns value of thought to. Um, and when you talk about character voice, that's one of the things that you consider um, is uh, if I were to be narrating from the perspective of a character that does have um, some form of religious belief, and in the case of Crescent, in the case of Rose, they do have some more spiritual beliefs, so um, some of their voice, some of the the filter through which they view the world or through which they speak does involve certain specific deities, um, which they make reference to, versus Domarin, who just doesn't assign those things importance. So it's something that hasn't come up a lot in the book, so I thought it would be interesting and fun to have a little prompt 
that does explore a little bit more of like that, that cultural aspect of Aravalia, acknowledging that it is something that exists in the background, that there are temples to various deities, because this would be a polytheistic society, um, where, um, you know, there would be a lot of options for someone who was religious to choose essentially which god that they followed. Um, and how someone who um, is a little bit more dynamic in that belief might react to that kind of, to being exposed to many different types of religions. And to having parents who were open to many different types of ideas and sort of exposing them to as many as they were interested in. That was really long-winded. That was a really long-winded way of saying one of my characters is in no way religious, but some of the other ones might be. <laughs> um, so that's sort of where I'm taking inspiration for this. I don't have a huge amount of plan for it. Um, I want to essentially create a supernatural situation that these characters are in and sort of just throw them into the fire and see how they deal with it. Um, Dormal himself is quite a powerful mage, um, and his brother and sister also have, um, magical abilities, um, to varying degrees as well. Um, so I want it to be specifically a supernatural experience because, um, the way that magic works and the way that the supernatural work in, um, the world of Aravalia is such that um, magic doesn't always affect the supernatural in the same way that it affects the natural. <laughs> uh, hence the supernatural. It is a, a strange phenomenon and therefore it is not necessarily affected even by a reality bending ability. Um, that's it. I don't necessarily know what I want the supernatural experience to be. We're gonna find out in a minute because I'm gonna turn on a timer and force myself to write. Um, but first, I'm just going to, because I've done the thing where I talked for so long that my coffee got cold, um, I'm just gonna pop AFK quick, do um, one refresh of the coffee, and we're gonna come back and have clicky clackies. I'm gonna shut up and stop yammering at you guys and do the thing that you're all here for, which is to hear me tippy tap typing for 20 minutes. Um, and we'll see um, if anyone has a supernatural thing that they want me to throw at these characters. Uh, you have the next two minutes to throw it at me in the chat and I'll look it up. Uh, I'll look it up <laughs> when I get back. Uh, and I will be back in a minute.
I'm back. My my pillow fell over. My cute, my cute little kitty pillow. Um, I'm actually thinking that I might just Google like some obscure supernatural thing. Legendary creatures by type. Horse goblin from the sea. <laughs> Some of these I'm familiar with. Um... such a list here. Go fuck off. Um, so some of these I'm familiar with, like uh, Nixies and Kelpies and that sort of thing. Um, Oh, they have bugbears in here. Canines. What is this? A legendary species of small animal in South American folklore, specifically. Interesting. This is quite an extensive list. Interesting. A low level trickster spirit, the traditional homeland of the a benekai? Am I saying that right? Is what is now called Northern New England and Southern Quebec. A raccoon. Does many foolish and mischievous things. I like the idea of a trickster spirit. Not necessarily this specific trickster spirit, but tricksters are always fun. I feel like I have, instead of starting the sprint like I said I was going to, I feel like I've fallen down a rabbit hole. Marion, um, it's a okay. So Rem Remidru is a creature said to inhabit the mountains and forests in northern Spain. This animal, which resembles a weasel, is born once every hundred years from a weasel or a marten. These mythological creatures have a very long body, like a snake, and their fur is slightly green colored. Its eyes are yellow and its nose is like that of a hog, which it uses to dig very deep holes. Um, their fur heals every sickness and the animal has a strong desire for gold. Interesting. Interesting. We have, we have some fish creatures. Of course, we have the Kraken on here, of course. A moon rabbit? What's a moon rabbit? A mythological feature in East Asia and indigenous American folklore. The 
Rabbit is seen as pounding with a mortar and pestle. What? But the contents of the mortar differ. Interesting. Oh, this one is like a whole rabbit hole of its own. This looks cool. What is this? Uh, has a body, wings, antlers, tail, and fangs attached to the body of a small mammal. Uh, the most widespread description portrays Wolpertanger as having the head of a rabbit, the body of a squirrel, and the antlers of a deer, and the wings, and occasionally the legs of a pheasant. What? Maybe something, maybe something like this. Ah, oh, so it is similar to a jackalope. Um, so yeah, I'm thinking, obviously I'm working in a fantasy world here, so I'm not necessarily going to take specifically. This looks really cool though. I mean, come on. Um, uh, first of all, I would love to have one of these as a pet. <laughs> Um, second of all, I would love to be terrorized by a trickster version of this. Like, come on. Could you imagine it Loki in this form? Like, come on. Um, also it could be some sort of shapeshifter, so it could have just chosen this form to screw with them. Um, so I like the idea of some form of supernatural trickster spirit taking physical form. Um, causing chaos in the local area um, and the kids go to investigate and they find this thing and they're like, first of all, WTF. And they're like, second of all, WTF. <laughs> hey, Neo. Um, yeah, let's, um, how are you, Neo, by the way? Let's, uh, let's, let's do the clicky clacky thing. Um, I'm going to keep this open so that I have a so that I have a thing that I can um, descript. Apparently there's like, this is just horrifying, but this is pretty cool, the artist rendition. At work until 2 a.m. Oh no, Neo, I'm sorry to hear that. How how far away from 2 a.m. are you? Like, what time is it? It is! It's story 22 time. We're gonna include this thing. I don't know if you've been lurking, AB Coffee, but we're making this thing happen um, in the story. Also, how are you, AB Coffee? How's it going? Just popped in? Yeah, I did a lot of blabbering, so we're just about to start... Um, it's 8 p.m. Oh gosh, Neo. Uh, good luck. Good luck on the shift. Uh, and hopefully we can provide some chill vibes in the background because it's time for the clicky clack starts.
Oh, hang on. Hang on. Before the clicky clack start, we've got a Don the Hat from Carly. Ooh! This little guy sits on top of the hat. Also, we got a Ghost Pepper. Hello, Ghost Pepper. How's it going? Carly, how's it going? What is up? Let's get a Jack Skellington hat on my head here. Boop. How's it going, Carly? Let me see if I can adjust it so that you can see both my head and the hat. All right, now we'll start the clicky clackies now that we got a hat on. doing pretty good um we're hoping that our plans are still on for uh thursday but uh you know snow has its own plans used a mic today uh on stream Neil. had to make you put on the thinking cap appreciate oh dang i haven't seen that emote before that's super cute I love making it fly across the screen, of course. I uh, gotta do some prep for D and D tonight. Nice. Yeah, reshovel. It. Well, wait until it stops snowing to reshovel the walkway because it's still going. <laughs> uh, hey, we've got we've got plans. If it, you know, if it ends up being a cozy home Christmas, we'll figure things out. <laughs> I just don't want to get stuck somewhere in between, you know.
Enjoy your lurk, Ghost Pepper. Appreciate. Nice, Neo. I'm glad you used a mic on stream. Also, thank you for the work lurk. It's appreciated. Carly, did I ask what you're up to today? Oh, Carly, if I could box some snow and send it to you, I would. We have so much of it right now. <laughs> Just at work. I hope work is going well. You do uh, IT stuff, right, Carly? My doggo loves the snow. I, I, I can imagine. When I was younger, we had a dog who really liked snow, too. He was short, so he would get buried in the snowdrifts quite easily, but he loved to just jump in a big pile of snow. Spent most of today cleaning up our workroom because student workers trash it. Oh no, that sucks! Uh, I hope it's quiet, though, because uh, theoretically, students are heading into Christmas break, I would imagine. Hey, Shy Revenge, how's it going? I have a legit question for you. Off stream, do you ever accidentally or not by accident call Ghost by his stream name? Are you pretty good at separating them? I do, not usually to his face. I don't usually call him Ghost Pepper to his face, but when I'm talking about him, like with friends, I do sometimes call him Ghost, even when he's not on stream. Um. And I have, as we all know, said his real name accidentally on stream before too. So it, I, I'm pretty good at separating them when we're talking like directly face to face. But when I'm talking with other people, sometimes one name or the other just slips out. Hey Kiki, how's it going? Shy, enjoy your work lurk. I hope you're feeling better. The last time I saw you, I think you were sick. The crew, hello. How is editing going, Kiki? Feeling better? Good to hear it. Even if it's just a little better, any better is good. Any improvement 
Yeah, no, I, I, I understand. Um, there are some people that I've known by their like internet handles, like forever. So Woof has always been Woof, even though I know his real name. <laughs> um, so I think most people are used to hearing me use like internet handles. I don't usually call him ghost like to when we're talking to his parents or whatever, but sometimes when I'm talking to friends, like if I'm talking to Flutter, I'll sometimes call him ghost instead of his real name, even though she's known him for like 20 years. Uh, just sore from overdoing it at work. Oh no, Shy, I hope you can take it a little bit easy. Lost my pencil. Oh no, Kiki, I hope you find it. Sometimes I accidentally call Bard her real name and I'm just like, oops. Yeah, I've, I've definitely called Ghost by his real name on stream by accident before. Just gotta make it through this work week. We're paid off next week. Nice! Yeah, I have today and tomorrow of writing work to do and then I am off for Christmas. Hopefully heading to visit family if the uh, weather cooperates. Um, getting Act 2 written for Halloween in the Hollowgate. That sounds awesome! Hopefully you're able to get some work done, some writing work done over, over the holiday break. Nice! Kiki, I'm glad you found it.
gonna take this off because it has definitely been 10 minutes. Have to write something in my workbook before I forget. Have a 10 minute break? Nice! Good luck, Kiki. It's always nice to slide a little bit of uh, writing into your breaks. Ready to go home? I feel you, Shy Revenge. I hope that uh, 5 p.m. EST comes to you quickly.
have to buy more glue sticks for all my workbooks so I can add the pictures. Nice, I think it's awesome that you add pictures to your workbooks, Kiki. All right, so we have 798, just like 800 words for that first sprint, not bad. I've sort of, um, <laughs> it took me a hot minute to sort of find uh, where I wanted to settle into this groove, but it's definitely um, starting to come together. Just a little bit um, of bits and pieces of a mystery here for my characters to be solving. Um, yeah, so I'm basically just establishing trickster-like things that are happening in this area that the siblings are visiting. Um, and they're basically trying to solve the mystery in case it's something dangerous. Um, and then, of course, we're going to reveal that it's uh, this uh, creature here, or at least something taking the form of this creature. Hopefully in the upcoming sprint. Um, I might actually take a quick pop AFK because um, I didn't get a chance to use the restroom when I was AFK the last time. And I need just a little bit of a bio break. Um, so I might pop AFK quick and do that. Just want to make sure that I didn't miss anything during the sprint. Um, I had a dream the other night. Um, that might be my next short story. Nice. Already know which characters to inflict it on. Exiled Faye. That sounds awesome. Also, my dog attacks the snow. I love dogs because they're so carefree. Um, I shovel uh, out pathways for her and she runs in and out of them. That's so sweet. Uh, nothing going on around here? That's nice, Carly. It's, it's always nice when you can basically get paid for just keeping things running and not really having to do a ton of work uh, to keep it that way. Hades get in the purse. I don't think Hades would. You would have to shove Hades in the purse. Silly question, what app do you use for writing? I'm actually just writing, I just use um, Word. Uh, so I have a quite old version of Word 2007 um, dating myself because that was the version of Word that was new when I was in university and I went to school for IT. So we were provided um, a copy of um, Office Enterprise. Peter, hello, hello. Thank you so much for the raid. Well, let's get you a shout out. Please check out our dear friend Peter. Fallout New Vegas. How did it go? How did your stream go? Um, I do have my writing in in this because I was get given a um, a license for Enterprise Word 2007 Enterprise, and it's never stopped working. Um, so I have basically the full suite of Word, Excel, everything. Um, so I use Word for all my writing, and I use uh, OneNote. If I pop over in here, I use uh, OneNote for all of my note taking. Um, another part of the um, Office Suite. You can get a free version of OneNote because um, they make it available for all students. It is an updated version. I don't like how it looks quite as much, um, but you can use OneNote for free through, I believe, Amazon's, uh, not Amazon, uh, Microsoft's um, uh, website. Um, I know a lot of people use like Shrivener and, and stuff like that, but I just, I know how things work in Word, so it's what I use. Debating what to uh, continue journal story writing, totally understand. Um, and it's a very like personal sort of thing. I definitely don't think that um, Word is the best for like journaling for novel crafting. It's fine if you learn like where all of the style and formatting things are. Um, for journaling, I actually have never really found, I just use my day planners for that. Um, so I've never really found the best app for it. OneNote is nice because you can make each, each paragraph like its own note and just move it around and stuff. So it's good for outlining and that kind of thing. 
tempted to just go by hand instead, then I can flip back to wherever. It's always an option. Um, we here to say hello. How are you? I'm doing pretty good, Peter. Today is my last stream of the year. It is snowing here. We are a little bit worried that our trip is uh, <laughs> going to run into um, some issues because of the weather. But today we're just chilling, writing a little uh, short, our last short for the year. Um, I'm about to take a quick hop AFK for a bio break, but then we're going to do some more clicky clackies. I have what is likely to turn out to be a chest infection. Oh no, Peter uh, may also be COVID, so I'm worried. I hope it turns out to be neither of those things, but I hope you're resting. I hope you're taking care of yourself. I hope you feel better. You've been sick for so long, Peter. Um, sad that it's your last stream of the year. I mean, um... Not to, like, put hope into anybody or anything. If for some reason our trip gets canceled and I'm around next week, I might pop on and do a Just Chatting stream. Um, the reason why this is my last stream of the year is because I'm actually not supposed to be home until January 1st. We are we are leaving on Thursday. We're supposed to be leaving on Thursday to visit uh, Ghost's family in Ontario. And we're not taking, like, computers or streaming equipment with us, so we just wouldn't, we just won't have access, right? Um, we would, we will be on Discord, um, I'll have my iPad with me, um, but we just won't, we just won't have access to, like, OBS or anything like that. Um, be very safe, we, we will, Shy. Um, we are looking at, I, I talked about this a little bit at the top of stream, but um, the airport that we are supposed to be flying to, so we live in a not huge town, not small town, just a medium sized town. So we have like a small airport. We are supposed to fly from here to a larger airport, Vancouver, um, and from there to Toronto to meet up with Ghost's parents. But um, Vancouver was slammed by a winter storm uh, yesterday evening and on into this morning. So they are, the airport is almost completely shut down. Um, so hopefully by Thursday, that'll be sorted out. Um, but if it's not for some reason, if we end up at home, um, then you might see me. <laughs> uh, I can't, obviously can't make any, um, guarantees about anything. Um, but yeah, the, the, the main reason is because I'm just not supposed to be home. Um, I am, of course, going to be back in January with more clicky clackies and all that stuff. Um, but the idea is to, is to finally visit family for the first time in four years, uh, for Christmas. Um, it's just not Flavor Town. I know, Peter, I hope you're taking care of yourself. I hope you're resting. I hope you're getting what you need to, to start feeling better. If you don't go, it'll be on Terry No. <laughs> um, we have never actually had issues flying through Vancouver before. The airport is usually super chill. Um, but they don't get a lot of snow in Vancouver. Um, they're a rain area. Um, winter weather, like, they have, because they're on the coast, they have a slightly different climate. Um, they're not really equipped to deal with um, snow the way other Canadian cities are. Um, I don't know the extent of the snow. I believe they've gotten quite a lot of snowfall in quite a short period of time. Even here in our town, um, some flights are grounded because there's been so much snow. Um, but uh, just crossing our fingers, hoping the stars will align so that we can get to our destination. But never fear if we end up having to stay home for Christmas. We have we have a roast in the freezer that we can use. We can figure it out. Like, it's not... Christmas won't be ruined. Um, it just won't be what was planned. But hopefully by Thursday, the clouds will part a little bit. Um, the forecast is not saying that, but hopefully that'll be what happens. <laughs> <laughs> trying my best although I'm worried about work and actually Christmas this weekend I'm a big mess of emotions and I've been not handling things great and starting to show I mean honestly Peter if you need some time if you need some time to yourself if you need to let those emotions just boil over it's okay um, it's okay to have emotions it's okay to need support it's okay to not always be okay uh, I hope you know that my DMs are always open if you need to talk to me, um, if you need um, 
if you just need to vent. Um, if it's not something that you want to talk about with other people, that's okay too, no pressure. Just know that if you need to, you know, if you need to go in a room and, and be alone with those emotions and just let them all out, that's okay. It's not a weakness to experience emotions or to be struggling with them. And the holidays can be a really hard time, especially given some of what I know you went through this year. Um, so I'm thinking of you, I'm sending you good thoughts and virtual hugs. And if you need anything, um, I'm around. I mean, I will be a little less around after after tomorrow because I might not be home, but my inbox is always open. I'm always happy to listen. I'm always happy to be a shoulder. Uh, and I'm wishing you the best. Honestly, seriously, the best for the holiday. I hope that you feel good enough to celebrate on Christmas, uh, whatever that ends up looking like. Yeah, no, totally. And I mean, I hope that we've made this into a space where people can be open and honest when they're having a rough time. I know not every conversation is for a public chat room, so if you guys ever want to reach out to me through Discord, please, please know that you can, and and please don't hesitate. If I'm slow to answer, it's not because I am not listening or because I don't want to hear from you. Um, you won't be bugging me. It's just you know I will I will reply as soon as I am able to to give your your messages the proper attention. I'm gonna take a quick break. Uh, pop AFK. Um, and come back and do more clicky clackies because clicky clackies were promised. Clicky clackies must be delivered. Uh, so quick bio break for me and then we will do sprint number two.
<laughs> Dumrin is cute? Well, thank you, Neo. I'm glad you think so. Uh, I think I'd really just rather stay by myself and process. I've had very little processing time. Uh, thing after thing after thing has happened and stopped me, and now I'm just in a place where I want to sleep and process things. <laughs> Sass Angry Dameron is in mood, right, though? Honestly, Peter, if what you need is time, I hope you're able to get that time. Like, hopefully you can explain to any people um, that you may be meant to gather with that you just need time and space and hopefully they will give you that time and space and allow you to engage uh, in a way that works for you if you need small interactions, if you need um, alone time, those are all very valid things. And especially when you're going through an emotional time, interactions with people can be very overwhelming. Um, so hopefully your friends and family understand if that's what you need over the holiday. And especially, like I said, at holiday times, um, with certain things going on, it can be, it can be a difficult time. Um, so there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with needing to, you know, just have time and space. And hopefully the people that are close to you can see that and give that to you. Um, I know the holidays is a time for family and, and hanging out and being close to people. But if you really seriously don't think that you can handle that, forcing yourself isn't necessarily going to help with that situation either. So don't feel guilty if you need your yourself time. Um, and that goes for anyone. Um, never, never be afraid to interact with something on the level that's comfortable with you. And hopefully the people that you're interacting with will understand that. Um, have some time, maybe 10 minutes. <laughs> Uh, Neo, I hope that everything is going well. Are you are you um, organizing today? Is that I know you can't tell me too much about what you're up to, but um, I know in the past that I have found holidays to be very overwhelming as well, and I'm the sort of person where large gatherings can be very daunting for me. Um, I tend to need to know um, how long I'm going to be at a place or basically um this is this is a thing if you are feeling overwhelmed during the holidays and you are about to leave for a family gathering there's nothing wrong with having an escape plan there's nothing wrong with having a set time and saying i am going to stay until this time i am going to leave at that time or i am going to leave if this gets heavy or i am going to you know walk away if this happens or, you know, if I start to, you know, I'm going to drive myself because if I start to feel like I need to leave, then I can leave. Or if I'm taking the train, like this is what times the trains leave so that I can, I can be, there's nothing wrong with making those plans in advance. There's nothing wrong with having some reassurance to yourself that if you start to feel like you can't be present there anymore, you have a way to go back to your comfort zone, your comfort space, and be and be away from what's overwhelming you. That is perfectly acceptable. That has helped me deal with a lot of social anxiety over the years. Ghost Pepper can tell you, like we we sometimes, you know, we even we even know that like I did not go to Ghost Pepper's Christmas party, company Christmas party this year because I was trying to avoid getting sick. And I instantly said to him, that means that you can stay longer because I tend to want to leave those gatherings before he does. And if he doesn't have to drive me home, he can just go with a friend or take a cab or whatever. And because he's going to be more comfortable being there longer than me. So uh, there's nothing there's nothing wrong with making those choices and making those plans ahead of time. Anything that you need to feel comfortable. I want to go to my sister's, which I do every year pre-Rona. I don't drive, so I have no escape plan, and it really damages me. I, I know, it's it's hard when you feel trapped in a situation. Oh no, Exiled Faye, I'm sorry to hear that you're not able to take a nap now. Hopefully, um, the shift runs down quickly so that you can so that you can take that nap. Um, I wish whatever God is still taking is still talking to me that I could just drive over and back on the day. I, I know what you mean, Peter. Last few years I haven't gone because we were looking out for my dad so he wouldn't get sick. Yeah. But I mean, Peter, if you don't feel like you can go, hopefully you can broach that conversation with your sister and say, look, all of these things are going on. I just need to, I just need to be, you know, in this space for right now. Hopefully, I know, 
I know some families are not easy to have that conversation with. Um, I hope that yours is. Um, and if they're not, I hope they can try for your benefit and for your sake. Um, cause it's important. Um, not to avoid a heavy topic, but I'm going to turn on the clicky clackies, get you guys some nice chill clicky clacky vibes hang, uh, hanging out in the background here. Uh, very, very not easy to put it mildly. I'm very sorry to hear that, Peter, um, cause I know what that feels like. Um, not, I'm not saying I specifically know what your experience is, because I don't. I do have family that's very hard to talk to. I have family that I have essentially stopped talking to because it is so difficult to talk to them. Uh, and it sucks. Um, it sucks to feel like you have to be on eggshells every time that you're talking to your family or to know that they aren't going to respect your feelings or your decisions. It's hard. It's, it's not ideal um, and it's stressful. And I'm sorry that that's a situation that you have to deal with, um, but it's not your fault if your family can't understand, if that makes sense. You're not a bad person for needing space um, and you shouldn't feel guilty for other people not understanding your boundaries. If you're setting boundaries and they can't handle them, that's on them. I was about to ask if we could clack soon. Nope, we are definitely clacking right now.
I agree. Peter is a handsome man. If you saw how much mucus and snot and various other internally body fluids have shot out of me today, think of it. I mean, just because you're sick doesn't mean you're any less handsome, Peter. You're still the same handsome man. You're just sick right now. There's a new guy in the team. He thinks I'm a weird dude because I look on the internet if the roads I choose are under construction. I mean, trying to pick a good route isn't weird. The guy before me didn't care at all. They were stuck four hours late. And I'm the weird dude. I mean... <laughs> it's good to be back. The person who took Cher was okay, but apparently they prefer me. Well, I'm glad that they... I'm glad that they're glad to have you back, Mio. Even if they think you're weird. You're just taking care of them, that's all. Hopefully they appreciate that.
is first scene, and we're gonna steal a scene break from another one of these here, and we're gonna do a slogan scene. The new guy is learning though. Well, that's good to hear. Good luck, Neo, with being back to work. I hope we provided a good break.
<clears throat> Need to go rest. Thank you so much for the raid, Peter. I hope you feel better soon. Please, please get tons of rest. And I hope the Christmas thing works out for you. spell today. This is going in a totally different direction than I initially expected that it would, but I am enjoying it. We are currently at 1,969 words. Uh, I believe we stopped at just shy of seven or 800, just shy of 800 last time. So that'll be about 1,100 words. Um, so we started... here. Yeah, 1,171 words that sprint. Pretty darn good. 
I usually aim for somewhere between two and 3,000 with these, so I'm definitely within range of uh, being able to finish it off in the next sprint if I can hit all of the points that I want to hit. Um, basically, what we've started with is um, Dormal, Silverbell, and Valerian being on a little bit of a vacation. Um, I just kind of set it in winter because it felt right at the time. I wanted to describe a frosted window, so there we go. So they're on a little bit of a winter vacation, visiting a small royal estate uh, in a smaller town, uh, which is currently being plagued by magical happenings um, that the siblings are trying to pin down in order to relieve the stress of the locals. Um, they have determined that it is not a rogue adept and that um, while magic seems to be involved, they are uncertain what the source of that magic is. And so Silverbell has suggested um, that they could be dealing with some form of supernatural trickster. They are trying essentially a spiritual ritual to summon this spirit into their presence and determine what it wants. And of course, I've already promised that when they summon it, it's gonna be this boy. This is the boy that they're gonna summon. Hey, Element Eds, how's it going? What is up? Uh, we're working on, I'm doing my last writing prompt of the year today, um, and it's, it's going really well, having tons of fun with it. Um, I don't think this is going to be the natural, like, um, embodiment of this spirit, um, but because we're dealing with a little bit of a trickster, they're gonna take this form to kind of screw with the siblings a little bit more. Uh, and we will we will see how that plays out. That's basically basically what we're doing. I've just started the, the summoning part. Um, so we're gonna be getting to we're gonna be getting to this to this boy uh, in a few in a few minutes here. Uh, just setting up for the day. Nice. I hope um, I hope it's gonna be a, I hope it's looking like it's gonna be a good day. Sorry, words and me are not having the best time today. Uh, I hope it's looking like it's gonna be a good one. Uh, it is very snowy here in our neck of the woods. Um, we are scheduled to leave on a flight on Thursday and we are a little bit worried that that might not happen <laughs> um, because the airport that we are supposed to be, our big that our big flight is supposed to be flying out of is basically shut down today. Um, and looking at the forecast, um, so <laughs> we're hoping that our Christmas plans are still gonna gonna happen but uh we've basically we've basically taken stock of what we have here in the house in case we have to emergency backup stay home for christmas um we are supposed to be flying out of uh, vancouver to toronto so we live in a slightly smaller town i won't say where um so we're gonna fly out of our local airport into a larger hub which this time was supposed to be vancouver and then from Vancouver to Toronto, where um, my my husband's parents would pick us up and drive us to the town that they live in, um, which is closer to that airport. But um, the lower mainland of BC was just absolutely slammed by winter storm last night. And apparently it is still snowing there today. Um, and Vancouver is a little, their climate is a little bit different. They're kind of like Seattle in that they don't usually get a ton of snow. It's usually rain. Um, so they're used to dreary. They're used to, to, to rain and, and um, water and all that sort of thing. But I don't think they get a lot of snow. Um, so they are struggling. Um, we did kind of try and see if the airport, the, the airline carrier would route us through a different airport, but I think it's too close to, it's too close to departure time. So they're essentially just being like, you have to wait and see how it is on the day. So you have to wait and see how it is. Um, we aren't scheduled to leave until Thursday morning, so hopefully it'll clear up by then. Hopefully the stars will align. Uh, we just really, really don't want to get stuck in route <laughs> we don't we don't want to get our first flight gets us somewhere and then we're just stuck there because there's no flights um so fingers and toes crossed uh that we can that we can get things sorted out um 
Yeah, it was not, it wasn't the news that I wanted to wake up to was checking on the Vancouver airport Twitter and then basically being like, if you're flying this week, check with your airline carrier. And it's like, oh great, we haven't even left yet and this is happening. Thank you, I appreciate that. Uh, do you have any plans for Christmas? Are you, are you guys uh, visiting family? Are you staying home? Uh, this is our first attempt to actually visit family at Christmas since 2018. Um, so it, it'll be a little disappointing if we can't, if we can't get out, but also I would rather, like I said, I'd rather be stuck at home than be stuck somewhere in between. <laughs> um, so, so we'll see. Fingers, fingers and toes crossed, knock on wood. Um, but I've read that, I've read that, um, when flights are getting canceled, most airlines just are not able to reschedule them until Boxing Day, which, ouch. Um, already done the family thing. We do it early each year. Oh, that makes so much sense. Uh, so Christmas is at home with the kids and my mom is coming for the day. That's awesome. That, that makes so much sense to be able, if you're, if you're able to swing doing it early, cause then you, you don't have to deal with what we're dealing with. The, um, the, uh, massive spike in travel. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, uh, there's been a lot of, uh, winter storms in Canada. I mean, Canada winter storms. We, you'd think we'd be used to it, but uh, I read that out in the Atlantic, they are also having in uh, Newfoundland and Labrador, they're also having some some flight issues with people getting stuck because again, flights are grounded. So, um, dang. But uh, we'll, we'll go with the flow, whatever ends up happening. Hopefully, Hopefully plans won't have to change, but we'll we'll do what we gotta do. When we were kids, we were shuffled from grandparents to grandparents' house, so we'd open our gifts and not be able to play with them. It was hard on our parents because we'd all get tired and grumpy. I know what you mean. When I was younger, we sort of had a system when I was younger because we all lived in the same town. Um, so we would go to my grandparents on my father's side on Christmas Eve and we would basically do like the big Christmas dinner gift opening and everything with them on Christmas Eve and then go to church uh, for the midnight service because we were they were the more religious side of the family and then um, we would do Christmas Day at um, my, with my mother's side of the family um, so it was a little bit it was a little bit easier in that we weren't doing it all on the same day um, but dang, we basically had two Christmases one day right after the other, and we would be up till midnight doing Christmas service on Christmas Eve. And then, of course, you know, we would get up super early on Christmas morning because we wanted our presents. Uh, so it was exhausting. <laughs> um, so we got older. Mom wanted to do it early in the month so we could stay at home with the kids on Christmas Day and they could just play with their stuff. That makes so much sense. Honestly, I, I'm not sure why that had, like, something like that has never occurred to me before. We wouldn't be able to do that with, um, our schedule just because, um, Ghost Pepper is a teacher, so he wouldn't be, we wouldn't be able to, like, fly across the country early or anything. But dang, like, that makes so much sense for if you, if you have a bunch of family stuff to do, to just stagger it like that. It used to be for my husband and I that we would do Christmas Day at home and Boxing Day at his parents' house and have to stay a few days. It was exhausting. Yeah, def especially if you have kids to, to take on all this stuff, too. After we had our first kid, we decided to cut them out so we don't have to do that anymore. Well, I'm sorry that um, that you had to cut anyone out, but I'm, I'm glad that you found something that, that works for that works for you guys. Especially when you have kids, you want it to be the smoothest process possible. We don't have kids ourselves uh, yet, but we know so many people that do have kids and travel, it doesn't matter how you're traveling, like by car, by plane, whatever. It's that much harder when there's kids involved, especially if it's young kids. Um, so anything that you can do to streamline that process and make it easier on the kids and easier on you, like seriously. It was a positive move for us. They're child abusers. Oh, gosh. And we both decided it was our kids' best interest and safety to not do anything with them. Well, absolutely. I I am sorry that you had to make a decision like that, like that you had to deal with people like that, but I am 
I am glad that you were able to make a good that decision for your kids and protect them from that kind of situation because that is not the kind of thing that you want your kids having to deal with for sure. Absolutely. We were talking a little bit earlier about setting boundaries within families and I will never ever judge anyone for making a decision about a boundary um, related to family members, especially with, with kids involved. Um, you gotta, you gotta make the most healthy decision for yourself and, and for your kids and a hundred percent no judgment on that. It's, it is so, it's so important. And it's really hard when family is involved because you can feel really guilty when you're setting that boundary. You can feel like, um, you're a bad person because you're wanting to say no to someone in your family, but it's so, so important to be able to say, you know, I can't do this for whatever reason, or I need space, or I need time, or you need to respect this aspect of my life if you want to have a relationship with me. And it's never, ever your fault how the other person reacts. If someone can't accept your boundaries, if someone reacts negatively to your boundaries, can you tell I've had this experience in my life? That's on them and not on you. And I will preach that from the mountaintop forever and ever you absolutely have a right to have boundaries and if someone can't respect them that is their problem and not you are not a bad person for having set the boundary life has gotten a lot better since we made the move and less issues with time management at christmas that's great uh it can be really hard to do but if people love you they'll take it on board exactly exactly and like even if if somebody has a hard time initially with your boundary but is able to come around to understanding and embracing it that shows that they care about you and that they are you know that they, they are trying their best if someone outright rejects a boundary then that's that's them being selfish right someone else's emotional responses are not yours to manage Honestly, I've learned some of these lessons the hard way. You can probably tell um, with a conversation like this, I've had, I've had people try to reject my boundaries. I have had to end relationships. I have had to um, distance myself from people who, who were not able to be understanding. Unfortunately, in some cases, family members who were not able to um, understand uh, why I was setting boundaries. Um, and some of those relationships have recovered and some of them haven't. Uh, and it sucks. It sucks that that has been my experience. But um, I guess the kind of silver lining is that when somebody is talking about, oh, Neo, I love, I love that little addition to that emote. That is, is so awesome. Um, um, the, the silver lining is that when people are talking about this kind of stuff and when people are struggling with, um, being in that situation where they have to set boundaries and some people aren't um, responding well to that, I can offer them that support and say, you know what, like, this isn't your fault. This isn't a guilt that you should have to feel. You're perfectly within your rights to set a boundary. Um, and people don't talk about that enough, I think. People, people, I think in some ways we're sort of left with this expectation of society that you know, that you'll do anything for family no matter what. And that's not always a reasonable expectation, but you're raised on that expectation and suddenly you need something for your mental health and people don't understand or people people have a hard time understanding um, and pressure you to retract what you need for your, your mental safety and comfort. And that's the bad thing, right? Not you trying to set a boundary. So if anything, I, you know, my experiences have sucked, some of them, and that's a reality, but my takeaway from it is I can pass that knowledge on to other people, that, that little bit of, hey, you're not a bad person because you need a boundary. You're actually doing the right thing. <laughs> Took a long time for me to learn that. Uh, when you're able to draw those boundaries, it sets your breath, absolutely. Like, and we were talking earlier about, you know, if you need to, if you have a family gathering coming up and you need to know when you're able to leave, like, that's okay, too. 
Um, anything that you need to do to feel comfortable with the situation. Because really, we shouldn't be forcing ourselves to feel uncomfortable all the time. <laughs> Healthy boundaries need to be discussed more so people know it's okay and that it can make them feel better and more confident in what they want or need. Absolutely. 100%. 100% agree. Um, there are things that I know now in my 30s that I wish I had known when I was 18. <laughs> like... Um, eventually someone did sit me down and say, hey, this is what boundaries look like and that is a toxic person in your life and you don't have to feel guilty for the way that person is making you feel. And thank goodness that that happened or I might still feel like a horrible person, you know, 10, 20 years later. Um, but it, it's, it's rough. It sucks when you, um, don't really understand how to set boundaries and how to keep boundaries and someone is pressuring you. Um, so yeah, always, always 100% happy to have that conversation. I forced myself to use a mic on stream. It's uncomfortable, yet everyone's pushing me to do it. Well, Neo, it's just that we want to hear your lovely voice. I'm glad that you used the mic on your stream, but you don't have to. You don't have to feel obligated. Um, it's just like being on camera. You can do it some days and not do it other days. <laughs> Had a lot of experience with needing to draw strong, unwavering boundaries. I think it was about 28 to 29 when I was confident to do it. Yeah, I definitely think um, I was able to establish um, boundaries in my mid-20s, but mostly because I had guidance of people who were older and more knowledgeable than me to back me up in those situations. Doing it for myself is definitely a more recent thing. Um, I guess you, I guess it's true that you get into your thirties and you, um, <laughs> you get a little bit of that. I don't give a fuck and it makes you stronger. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's definitely, especially like I said, if you're, if you're raised to expectations, cause I think our society and, and stuff, um, raises us to certain expectations and untangling yourself from that societal expectation and realize realizing that some of that expectation is toxic is so hard i think we spend our 20s basically unlearning all of the bad shit we learned as kids right hey that be ashley robin how's it going what is up it wasn't a bad experience i figured that you were trolling just a little bit neo how did I know? <laughs> How did I know you were sassing me, Neo? Uh, can totally feel that 30s comment. Yeah. Now, I wish... Part of me wishes I could go back and redo my 20s with what I know in my 30s. Because, holy man, my life would be a lot less stressful. But um, anything that I can pass on from having learned in my experience to younger people to help them not have to deal with what I dealt with happy happy to do and anyone who is the same age as me and still struggling with that shit like i feel you it's hard i'm unlearning all the stuff i learned like a year ago the pandemic certainly taught some lessons to us all i think um but uh i definitely I d like, I don't know if it was hitting my mid-30s or if it was um, the pandemic or what it was, but the last few years have definitely taught me that I don't have to get as wound up about some things as I used to, which I appreciate because it's, like you said, it's liberating. It's freeing to have that, that fresh breath and be able to say, this is just how I feel about that and whatever. Back into writing. Nice. Glad to hear it. <laughs> this is the most real. I this see this is why I appreciate doing these streams though is that like we can just vibe on that level of big mood but seriously. <laughs> um and especially at this time of year these kinds of conversations because this is when all the stress comes out. Like, yeah, some people love the holidays because it's all about the celebration and they don't they don't have worries and they know it's going to be great. And some people have those worries, right? Some people, like for some people, Christmas is really stressful. And so being able to have conversations about how to make it less stressful is so important. 
As someone who realized they were trans when they were 28 and will totally tell you to fuck off, you are disrespectful. I would also love to redo my 20s, right? Wouldn't it be nice if we just got one, like, decade do-over with the experience that we have? Like, there are so many things about my 20s that I look back now and I'm like, it would have just been so much easier if I understood this one little thing. <laughs> I would have been so much happier. My turning point was having my son nearly dying. Um, positive, I realized how happy I was with my life and exactly what I wanted, but primarily it was the knowledge that I had to do something about my in-laws and the situation that was going on. So I grew a pair and contacted CPS and the police. I mean, I'm sorry that, I'm sorry that that was the experience, but I'm so glad that you had that moment, right? That you were able to see and that you were able to take action. Um, because it's, it's important. I had a complete breakdown telling my husband what I'd done, but having a child kicks protection instincts, uh, not just for your baby, but other people. Definitely. I definitely think children change a lot. I think any time that you have to consider another person and not just yourself, that definitely changes. It changes your perspective a lot. It changes the way you think. And I'm glad that he was supportive. Absolutely. I hate the holidays anymore. I'm sorry to hear that, Shy, but I also understand. It's not, Christmas is not an easy time for some people. And so hopefully if you're having a rough time with the holidays, you know that you can come here, you can hang out, you'll always be safe and welcome and you won't have to stress. I also went to school, which I hated and it would have been better for me to literally just go get a fast food job. Oh gosh, I definitely had some college experience. I don't use my degree. I got a degree, it got me through a few years of employment, which I'm grateful for, but <laughs> I do not use my degree anymore. Love if they fed themselves though. <laughs> I can feel that. Um, the kid was a horrible experience for me. I have a few friends who have had mixed mixed feelings with having kids. Yeah, I, I will say my degree got me through a few years, uh, like, financially, that we needed me to be in a certain position, so I don't necessarily regret it. Um, but if I think if I had it to do over, I would, do, I would do so many things differently if I could go back. If I could go back and redo my 20s with everything I know now, I would have started writing earlier. I would have started streaming earlier. I would have started like putting myself out there much sooner. I would have like stopped getting tied up in knots about the proper way of doing things and just given more shit a try. Like I wish I wish I had been that type of person in my 20s. Um but here I am now. Um in my 30s and at least doing it. I'm doing it now, right? Better late than never. Not that this is late, but, you know, better at this point in my life than never, never doing it. I hate being a parent, but I love being a mom. That actually makes sense to me. Because um, I can see how parts of it are, are difficult, but parts of it are rewarding. Long story short, her dad poisons her against me enough where she got super physical all the time. I'm sorry to hear that, Shy. I'm very sorry to hear that. I would have transitioned earlier. I wish I had been diagnosed with bipolar earlier. It's, totally. It sucks that it... it I mean, first of all, um, I, have, I have several trans friends, so I can say that the medical system is not positive. Like, you, some, some people have to fight really hard to be able to start their transition, and that's shitty. Like, you should not have to fight the medical system. And it's the same with any any type of um, like chronic illness or mental illness. So many people have to fight just to get a diagnosis. And that is shitty. That should not be a thing. You should not have to fight tooth and nail to get a diagnosis and get the help that you need. That is shitty. Um, so that is something that I hope that changes for everyone in the future because damn. But... That said, I'm glad that you were able to get on the meds you need and that you were able to get the diagnosis you need. And I'm glad that you are are able to have transitioned and be in a place where, because you sound like you're much happier now. Um, but yeah, damn, like if, if people could get access to the stuff that they need without having to fight for it, the world would be a much better place. 
Uh, if you can't make neurotransmitters from scratch, store-bought is fine. Exactly. And if you need those store-bought neurotransmitters, you should be able to get them without having to it be a huge fight. I went to the hospital because I couldn't stop shaking. I went back several days and they never gave me a psych eval. I'm sorry to hear that. I know because you had talked earlier about having some struggles with just trying to get diagnosed and get on the proper medication. So I'm very sorry that that was the experience you had to have. Um, <clears throat> and I know, I know there's stigma involved with some of these things as well. Like, and there shouldn't be. There absolutely shouldn't be. Um, but our society has certain images of people with certain needs that are outdated that we need to get rid of. I was just violent. Thankfully, though, it probably would have gotten worse. I mean, I'm glad that you were, again, I'm glad that you were able to get on the right meds. The day I realized that you needed help was both sad and hilarious. <clears throat> the, I mean, I, I love hearing people's success stories. Like, I love hearing people say, I'm happy now, I have what I need. Because everyone should be able to say that. Uh, and I guess no and, just full stop. Everyone should be able to have that, that moment where they get what they need. Um, I certainly have never had, I've never needed to be on um, any kind of um, like mental health medication. But I had a moment earlier this year where um, you know, my physical health was spiraling. I was dizzy all the time. I was really struggling just to focus just to be myself, just to have a good day. Um, and my thyroid specialist finally called and was like, hey, your thyroid is out of control again. I think maybe we should put you on medication. And he basically gave me the choice of, you can wait and see if it goes away on its own, or we can just get you on medication and get it going. And I was like, let's do the medication thing. And it was, Almost overnight, I started to feel like myself again. Within within 48 hours of starting to take the medication that he prescribed for me, like the dizziness disappeared. I was able to focus again. I realized how not myself I was, like just how far I had slid. Um, and I'm very, very fortunate. I know it's not the same. I know it's not the same as what you guys are talking about. But it was, um, I was very, very fortunate that my doctor was able to catch what's wrong with my thyroid very early in the process and to get me on that medication right away because I am doing so much better two months later. Like, holy shit, I cannot tell you like how much night and day it felt like. So 100%, if you need any kind of treatment for anything, you should be able to get that, especially if it's gonna be that big of a difference. <laughs> Uh, I threw a glass at Hubby's face and he ducked in and said, you miss me, bitch. I smashed on the wall behind him and I was so shocked. I started laughing my butt off and was like, yeah, I probably need to see a doctor. I'm glad you were able to get on the medication that you need. I have all the symptoms of a major thyroid issue, but the test came back fine. Oh no, author goddess. I'm so sorry. I hope they're able to find it for you. I think I was very, I think I lucked out because my doctor told me that when they tested me, I have Graves' disease, I've mentioned this a few times, so I have overactive thyroid. Um, and when they tested me for it, the um, what happens with Graves' disease is that my immune system actually attacks my thyroid and causes my thyroid to overact. Um, and so what happened was, and I don't know if this is common or not, but when they tested me, that... that um, um, immune system, that specific immune system response was active. So they know I have that specific antibody that causes that specific um, issue. And so they were able to diagnose me with it first try. Uh, so I don't know if I just got lucky in that, like I was having a flare up at the time they tested me and they didn't have to go through a whole big rigmarole or if that's a common thing for Graves disease. Um, but I was very lucky that they didn't have to do an entire battery of tests. They were able to catch it pretty quickly. Um, looks at the pile of med bills that I need to pay before I can even consider non-emergency stuff. I'm so sorry, author goddess. That is not, definitely not how it should be. 
I was on a med that wasn't working but didn't know and it wasn't until I was trying to have a kid about five years of being on the wrong meds and had to switch. All of a sudden I could focus on things, felt calm, was sleeping, and I was like, wait, is this what normal people feel? I've had a few moments like that um, in the past few months. I, yeah, I was very, I was very fortunate. My mother has the same thing. If she stops uh, taking, she'll lose a lot of weight. Yeah, because my metabolism will just go crazy if I, if my thyroid. The idea is like um, the medication that I'm on is supposed to train my thyroid to work properly so that hopefully I could eventually stop taking the medication. Um, but I noticed, I noticed within 48 hours, like how big a difference it made. I'm also very lucky that I'm in Canada where, where we have public health care and I have extra coverage through my husband's employer, so I haven't had to pay an arm and a leg to get my diagnosis either. That's a whole other rant. <clears throat> How else does a fully grown woman ha with two kids uh, no longer produce body hair? Hair loss is a thing, is a, is a thyroid issue for sure. That's one of the things that I was warned about. Completely different person now that I'm on the right meds. People who know me now view me as an extrovert. When I say that to my family and old friends, they're shocked. Likewise, I tell people now that I used to be an introvert and they don't believe me. I'm just glad, like I said, I'm just glad that you found what you needed. I have bills for shit I know I don't owe, but I don't have the energy to argue them. Oh, Exile Faye, I'm so sorry. The healthcare system in the US is a whole other is a whole other rant that I could literally spend hours on. We don't really have med bills here, but I did recently start a medication that costs about four hundred dollars a month. Ouch. It's hard and I can't imagine other costs on top of that. I yeah, I'm very lucky that um I was told that 90 days of my medication would be something like $260 if I didn't have insurance, but because it's I have insurance coverage for, I think it's like 70%, I only pay like $50 for 90 days of my meds. And that was when I was taking, that was when I was taking two, uh, two tablets twice a day, and now he's cut my dose down to one tablet twice a day. <clears throat> I stopped taking my thyroid meds and I don't feel any different. I mean, the thing with thyroid meds is that you need to be monitored constantly because your thyroid levels will change. So it could be that your thyroid is doing what it's supposed to be doing at the moment, Shy, and you do, you might not need them now. You might need them again later. It depends on what condition you have. Uh, I, not to cut this conversation short, because it's a very important conversation. I'm going to take a quick bio break, and then we are going to finish off this, uh, I am at least going to finish off this, um, this words, this, uh, little short here, uh, with another round of clicky clacks, but please feel free to keep talking in the chat. Don't feel like you guys have to stop talking just because I pop AFK. Um, <clears throat> Because this is an important, this is an important thing. And I know that the healthcare system has screwed over so many people and makes life difficult for many, many more. Um, so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, hopefully not gonna interrupt by popping AFK, but I'm gonna pop AFK quick and I will be back with another sprint with another 20 minutes of clicky clackies for you.
I return and I just want to say man author goddess always brings the truth bombs and I love it I love it I love it when people can have such frank conversations and just speak bluntly because I have lived in too many places where that was not how you could converse and <laughs> <clears throat> All I know is the current state of U.S. healthcare is an insult to everyone who's paid even a cent in taxes since World War II. But we have warplanes that don't work. <sighs> definitely, I think there's a lot of... Um, I've mentioned this on stream before, but I definitely think there's a lot of misconceptions in the U.S. about how healthcare, like how socialized healthcare actually works. When I moved to Canada, they were talking about a two-tiered healthcare system um private and um public and then the obamacare debate happened in the u.s and it killed the two-tiered health health care system debate nobody wanted private health insurance because they saw what it looked like in the u.s my in-laws can't disassociate social programs from communism they've been brainwashed since they were kids yeah 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 so that's why like in all seriousness, I, I appreciate that when we get into these conversations and Author Goddess comes around, just here's the truth bomb, because 100%, that's the truth. We we are raised in the U.S., because I was raised in the U.S., and you're raised to believe certain things about how the U.S. works and how the U.S. healthcare system works, and a lot of that, and how other healthcare systems work elsewhere, and a lot of it is misdirection, and some of it's flat out lies. <laughs> and you have to really go and live somewhere that has a public health care system to appreciate the difference. I don't know what the hell I would do if I lived in the U.S. I have no idea how expensive it would be to get, because I have to go for blood tests um, sometimes every month, sometimes every other month. And I have to, right now, I have to be on medication for the next 12 to 18 months. I have no idea what that would look like. Um, I definitely wouldn't be able to write full time in the States if I needed to have healthcare costs. Is almost always right, well informed, is seldom heard believed. Call me Cassandra. I know, author goddess. I feel you. I, I appreciate though. I appreciate that you speak out on these things. Please know that. Uh, because we need to have those conversations. Choose drugs or food, right? And I don't even, I am not diabetic, but I don't even want to try to imagine what it's like to be diabetic in the U.S. right now. With the way the cost of insulin has fluctuated, I don't even, I can't even comprehend what a struggle it is for, and these are people like, you can't choose. You have to have it. It's life or death. It shouldn't even be a conversation, but here we are. Um, so on that bombshell, <laughs> I'm going to do some clicky clackies, but again, please feel free to keep discussing this in the chat because 100% like these are conversations that have to be had. And I wish, I honestly wish I could scoop you all up and bring you all here to Canada where our health care system is far, far from perfect, um, especially depending on where you live. We definitely have some, you know, blips in the system, but at least at least you can get health care. 
everyone associated with the insulin scam needs to be tried. I, like, seriously, how is it not murder? Like, it's... If you know anything about how diabetes works, it's not a question. And I might not be diabetic, but I know several people, like I had a cousin who was born with diabetes, who God only knows what it's been like for him the past few years. I honestly, genuinely, I'm going to clicky-clack here, but I honestly genuinely believe that healthcare should not be for profit. It should not be able to be for profit. You shouldn't be able to benefit from the suffering of others. People deserve to have life-giving, life-saving treatment. End of discussion. There shouldn't be a money factor involved. had the convo in 2016 with my cousin who's a physician's assistant she said most medical professionals want socialized medicine because trying to collect on bills takes up so much of their time they barely get enough to cover their expenses they would make more with lower costs covered by the government well and it would allow them to focus on patient on their patients right because most doctors want to be able to take care of their patients i mean i'd like to believe most doctors want to be able to take care of their patients and want to make sure their patients are getting well cared for and having to go through i know my mother had an issue where her doctor's office cut her off because she couldn't pay her medical expenses and her doctor was furious because he had nothing to do with it it was his assistants who did it it was the people running his office and he was like you know she has a, a neurological thing going on like they had to they had to operate and put a plate like they had to take out a part of her skull and put a metal plate in and then her her doctor's office is like cutting her off from going in it's like excuse me <laughs> and the reason why she can't pay is because she's on disability and she doesn't have the money like she's not screwing you over she literally has not the money
Conquest Publishing, off to work on the MMO server. Thanks for the fun stream. Thank you for hanging out. My spine hates me today. I'm so sorry to hear that, uh, Exiled Fae. Also, I apologize for not keeping up with chat. I just, I need to get this, uh, I need to get this written. Have reached chapter three. Nice. Congrats. Oh, of 34. <laughs> I mean, hey, it's still better than on being on two of 34, right? Progress is progress. So reminder, I'm basically describing this boy. <laughs>
It's day one of school holidays. He's home for five weeks. Dang, we only get, uh, my husband gets three weeks. Um, so I imagine, I imagine having the kids home from school for five weeks is going to be challenging.
Cheers, Supernatural writer. Thank you for the hydrate. I'll start my timer for work, and two minutes later he wants to have a conversation, but the moment I stop work, silence. Oh no, I'm so sorry. My husband can be like that sometimes. I, I tease. My husband's pretty good. My husband's pretty good about not interrupting me. I'm not just saying that because he might be listening. <laughs> How's it going, Supernatural? Alright, I know we've hit the timer. I'm almost done here. We are at 3,144 words. We wrote, I did quite a bit of panic writing in that last one. Uh, we started here with Dormal rolling his eyes. Uh, so that was 1,175 words. I'm just about done. Basically, they have summoned this spirit into their circle. They have identified that it's probably demonic in nature. Um, and Silverbell is going to essentially try to beat it at its own game by invoking um, blessings of various different gods within 
uh, Aravalia, the place where they've grown up, um, to see if one of them can essentially banish the demonic presence. Uh, so I don't think I have a ton of writing left to do here. I think I might turn on my 10 minute timer, which is technically my break timer. Um, but I think I might turn that on and um, just belt out these last few words and, and polish off this final story, this final short for 2022. Thank you, Element Eds. Um, I have learned to uh, turn off to turn off certain parts of my brain and just type when I need to. So um, we got off on such a tangent, which is fine. I love having those conversations, but we got off on such a tangent that I knew I had to type quickly. So <laughs> very, very quickly decided to sort of um, shove the inner critic into the back and just get it, get her done. As my husband would say to just give her. Uh, I taught my husband very early to just put a pen on my desk if he wanted to speak to me so he doesn't disturb my flow. My husband is pretty good about if he sees my timer running, um, he usually will just wait. He'll go away and come back when the when the timer is over. During the pandemic when he was working from home, we, we often both interrupted each other. It wasn't necessarily the best arrangement for either of us. Um, so I do tease him from time to time, but he's actually pretty good about uh, respecting my my work timers and stuff. Lots of finger shenanigans here today. Uh, <clears throat> started work an hour late. I feel that. Um, I have been really struggling to keep my brain out of vacation mode because I have I have today and tomorrow of getting work done, and I have a certain amount of stuff that needs done, which is not. A small amount of stuff um and then we're supposed to be on a plane um 9 15 in the morning so we have to be at the airport at like 7 15 in the morning on thursday so vacation mode can start thursday when we get to our destination but not before but my brain is like but why i don't want to do the things especially because ghost pepper is on vacation now his vacation started on monday so he is very much in chill mode and i am very much not <laughs> Got this manuscript 16 days later than I was supposed to. Oh no! And did they still expect you to have it done in the same amount of time? That is... That is harsh. <laughs> My time off that I had planned is taken up with work. Oh no! I hope that you're able to still get some time off because it's so, so important. Um, they tried. Fair. Um... <laughs> I, uh, I have, a uh, I do some editing for some other authors and I have, um, made it clear to them that usually the last two weeks of December and the first week of January are, are a no, <laughs> are no, uh, I was like, yeah, no, good. Again, boundaries. Cause I mean, if, if someone's going to be late on getting something to you, they have to understand that you can't just magically make all that work happen in less time. Because it's work. <laughs> and it's a lot of brain power. And it's Christmas time. Alright, so I am almost done with this. I'm so excited for hitting the end. So I am going to turn on that 10 minute break timer. Uh, just a quick little sprint to the end here. And then we'll see who's around to read. I still want to finish it before January because I started a new project on the first. That makes sense. But don't like break yourself over it for sure. I'm only on page 20 of 198. Yeah, see, I, I always get the, but maybe if I do this, I can make it happen. And sometimes you just can't. We all have, we all have limits.
Flutter, how you feeling? Enjoy your lurk. I have to go out in about half an hour to pick up groceries and mess with the dog and my husband. At least it's both quick in and out uh, the building. Good luck. Coming up to Christmas Day, gonna do what I want when I want. Exactly. Exactly. You gotta have that Christmas break. Another positive test today. Oh no, Flutter. I'm so sorry. Um, I was hoping that you would get better news today, but I hope you're resting. I hope you're feeling better.
All right, and there we finally have the uh, prompt appearing in the very last line. Any god can fit in your purse if you try hard enough. Uh, this did not turn out the way I intended. It was definitely um, a much longer and more interesting romp than I anticipated, but we are at 3,789 words. I'm very happy with what I ended up writing. <clears throat> it's it's interesting how sometimes you go into something with a very sketchy plan and it doesn't turn out that way, but it turns out even better. Um, so I'm very happy with this. I think it's a very worthy final installment in this project. A very fun uh, end of the year prompt to have done. I'm even thinking I would love to expand this and include it in a novel in the future, if possible, depending on um, uh, where the plot for the the last trilogy of the Aravalia Chronicles goes. But this will definitely go on my blog. A nice little highlight of um, Dormal and his siblings. It's a good creative outlet when you're sick of words. Uh, indeed. Love making stuff out of clay, but I've fallen out of it. I do cross-stitch. Um, when I need a break from words or just to relax or whatever, um, cross stitch is my non word creative outlet. So, um, highly, highly recommend having something creative that you can do when, when words just aren't doing it for you. Um, I haven't been on Pinterest in so long. I mostly use it for clay designs. I make dragons out of clay. That's so awesome. Clay is something I've never, I've definitely never gotten the hang of. Um, I really want to get back into drawing. I keep, I keep telling myself I'm going to make more time to draw. I'm going to make more time to draw. And I just, I never do. Um, but I would love to, I even if it's only doodles, I would love to, I would love to doodle more often. For sure. Decided to take a break from writing and start a mood board on Pinterest. Nice. I have, I have boards for um, my various different novel projects, which I like to go and pick away at from time to time. Just just add to and refine and, and all that sort of thing. Very, very um, like low key, not something I do very often, but nice and fun. Uh, we are gonna see who is around on the Twitch uh, so that we can read, because I need to get some lunch. I unfortunately must leave you until next year. Um, Gotta, gotta get a few more things wrapped up and then get ready for our trip. I'm surprised, but Ghost Pepper doesn't actually seem to be streaming today. I thought that was the plan. Oh, you know, he's preparing for D&D, &D, so maybe that's why. Maybe that's why. Let's see who else we can possibly drop in on. We have a uh, base prefect we could drop in on. Haven't dropped in on them in a while. I think they might be on a break. Uh, but they are doing sprints today. We could head over there. We could head over there. We could head over to Estantia. Working on some writing as well. We could also head over to uh, Supernatural. We haven't raided into her in a while. She is, uh, ooh, I had an ad pop up, but it looks like she is doing some Pomodoro. Um, and she is always hanging out supporting. So we could head to any of those places. Who Ate the Squid Supernatural Raider is definitely an option. Also, hello, Who Ate the Squid. I hope you're doing well. I hope you weren't the one that ate the squid, because my squid back there would be sad. My squid that says, I believe in you. <laughs> my cheerleading squid. It would actually be easier if I moved the camera closer to the picture instead of the picture closer to the camera. <laughs> I will not be able to lurk any longer. Have a nice rest of your stream. That's all right. Whoop. That's all right, Neo. We're actually wrapping up. I hope you have a good rest of your shift. I hope 2 a.m. comes quickly for you and that you're able to get things uh, sorted out. And uh, if I don't see you, Neo, I hope you have a good holiday. 
Um, I will miss you all as well. Like I said, I will be hanging out in the Discord. Um, I will, if we don't, if something ends up happening to the flight, like I might be around, but uh, otherwise we will be in the Discord. I'll still be reachable. I just won't be able to stream because I won't have access to my equipment. I think we should drop over in on Supernatural. We haven't raided her in a while and she does hang out in the chat quite often. Uh, so let's do that. Let's go over for some Pomodoro, hang out with our good friend Supernatural. Remember, I always, I always have that moment where I go to start the raid and forget how raids work. <laughs> Please feel free to use any emotes that make you happy uh, for the raid, because of course we want to spread the love. That's the most important thing. Uh, thank you guys so much for hanging out on this, my last stream of the year. 2022 has been amazing. Um, I've met so many people. I've hung out with so many writers. It's been such a joy. I'm so glad that I decided to do this and keep doing this. I can't stress that enough. Um, I know today was a bit chaotic, but it was great. It was everything that I love about these streams and so much more. Um, I am wishing you all a happy holiday season, however and wherever you celebrate. I hope that everything goes well for all of you. Uh, and I hope that I will see you all again in January with many good tidings. Um, the, again, I just can't, I can't say enough how amazing it has been for all of you. Element Eds, thank you so much for stopping by. Really appreciate it. Exiled Faye, Flutter Die. Um, I'm gonna miss so many people. Peter, uh, Author Goddess, um, Ashley Robin, thank you all so, so much. Uh, for hanging out chatting with me today. I will see you in the new year and please take care.